All right, it's time for further review. Glad to have you aboard with us. Friday show is brought to you by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Um, maybe tomorrow you get by Don Juan Cigar Bar, light up a stogie, pour a cocktail, and watch the return of the XFL. A full slate of games this weekend uh, in the XFL. There are some familiar names. Uh, the quarterbacks, the starting quarterbacks in the XFL, uh, Brandon Silver. Remember Brandon Silver? Of course you do. From Troy. Uh, P.J. Walker. Jordan Ta'amu from Ole Miss. He'll be starting for St. Louis. Uh, Cardale Jones is starting for D.C. Uh, Landry Jones from Oklahoma. He'll be starting for Dallas. Matt McGloin of Penn State. He'll be starting in New York. Aaron Murray, the former Georgia Bulldog. He'll be starting for the Tampa Bay franchise. And then Josh Johnson out in Los Angeles. So you're going to have some names that you recognize. You're going to have some familiar faces in the XFL. Um, Saturday, you've got two games, Seattle at D.C., Los Angeles at Houston. And then Sunday, you've got Tampa Bay at New York and St. Louis at Dallas at games on ESPN. A lot of people have looked at this and maybe panned the idea of the XFL succeeding. In my opinion... I don't think there has ever been a better time for the XFL because the thing that networks, TV networks, the cable television networks crave right now is live sports programming. Follow me here. If if you're driving, listening, watching, whatever. How many people, how many of you watch your favorite TV show at the time it airs every week. Appointment viewing. Like 7 o'clock on a Tuesday night on NBC, I'm watching whatever. Like back in the day, like TGIF, 7 o'clock on Friday, here comes Full House. Like you just knew that was it. How, how many, like whatever night of the week Friends aired, I don't even remember. Or Seinfeld, like ER. Or it, what's the show in Seattle? The uh, Grey's Anatomy. Right? Like, we we used to consume television by appointment viewing. Nobody n- nobody does it anymore. Everybody watches everything either on demand on, you know, with, your, with your, your DVR or on whatever streaming service you use. You watch it when you want. Uh, man, I'm going to be sitting in the airport. I'll catch up while I have my, my layover. Like, that's how we consume media now. The only thing that people watch live anymore is live sports and live sports talk so like which is why cst came to us and we're like hey we'd like to do that because it's 15 hours of programming live programming in the middle of of the week i mean it it makes a lot of sense it's it's why this makes sense it's why the xfl makes sense why like why do you think you continue to see all of these media rights deals with all these conferences and all these professional sports leagues continue to grow because This is what's in demand. This is the thing. This is the content that these networks need. So if you think of it this way, can, will the XFL challenge the NFL? No, never. Like no chance. Like I will put this at a zero point zero 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 one percent chance that the XFL ever overtakes the NFL. Our nation is in a relationship with the NFL. A, a century long, really a half century, but relationship with the NFL. And I know in the Southeast, we're college football heavy here. But our nation is pro football centric. Okay. The NFL may erode, and I think there's some belief, there's even, even if it's just circumstantial evidence, when you look at things like the Super Bowl ratings or different interest levels, like younger players choosing not to play football because of concussions or whatever it may be, maybe interest in the NFL will erode, but that attention will only divert with a younger audience to other sports, not to the same sport in a different league. More young people might be interested in the NBA. More young people might be interested in soccer. More young people might be interested in esports. Like all of that is is a very real possibility. 
But the XFL overtaking the NFL, that will never happen. Now, does that mean the XFL can't succeed? Absolutely not. But if your definition of success is 17 million viewers on average for a game like the NFL gets, the XFL will never do that. But two Saturdays ago, the NBA, can we agree the NBA is a pretty successful professional sports league? The NBA on ABC, the American Broadcasting Company, it's prime time game on January the 18th, or three weeks ago, netted a 0.7 rating, a four share, and 2.32 million viewers. Can the XFL average 2 million viewers a game? Are there 2 million people in the United States of America that say, I don't really dig basketball? I'm glad I have a football option because I'm not super into the NBA. I love football, and now here's a chance to watch football in the spring. And I know a lot of these guys. Like, is that plausible? Hell yeah, that's plausible. And that's all you need. The XFL didn't do a deal with some one-off cable network that's, that's hitching its wagon to the XFL hoping it survives. The XFL did a deal with the Disney company and Fox. They're going to be on ESPN, ESPN2, ABC, Fox, FS1, and FS2. They're going to be front and center. It's not like you got to go dig deep to find CBS Sports Network, wherever that is, if you have that channel, to go dig and find these games. If you're bebopping around on a Saturday at 1 o'clock and you flip on the American Broadcasting Company, you're going to be watching Seattle at D.C., the XFL. And the thing that has doomed a lot of these leagues is they haven't had the financial backing to withstand maybe the initial onslaught of expenses. Vince McMahon's committed a half a billion dollars already to this company. Like, he's pot committed. He's in. And he doesn't, it doesn't need to be a a, a success, a huge financial success for him because he's got his cash cow that's printing money with, with the WWE. So this for him is pride. It's ego. It's seeing if he can make it work. Can they get 2 million viewers a game? Yeah. I, quite honestly, if we're here on Monday and they don't average 2 million viewers a game, I'd be surprised. Now, there is a potential, and I think an inevitable uh, circumstance that, that'll happen that could be sort of a tipping point for the XFL. In the same way, in the same way that we saw Leonard Fournette and Christian McCaffrey decide, I'm not playing bowl games, man. Not risking it. I got too much on the line. Like, I'm not playing in bowl games. And they sat out. And now it's a thing every year. We wait and see if the top prospects are going to play. A lot of people crushed Fournette that year, but but he's been the Pied Piper. He was the one who took the daggers, but opened the door for other premier prospects to say, Why do I want to go play in the Music City Bowl when I got $10 million waiting on me in three months? Right? It's going to happen. There is going to be a prominent college prospect who says, after their freshman year, they say, why should I play two more years of college football for free when I can go play in the XFL and make a quarter million dollars a year for the next two years? Take care of my family and then go into the NFL. When, not if, when that happens, the XFL becomes massively, exponentially more of an interesting proposition. And that will happen because there's going to be a kid somewhere Maybe it's at LSU, maybe it's at Florida, maybe it's at Michigan, maybe it's at Cal. Who knows? There's going to be a kid somewhere who plays his freshman season, plays really well, and decides, you know what? Why am I going to do this? I hate school. I don't want to be here. I'm risking injury to play for free. I can go play for two more years in against you know professional competition, older guys, get paid to do it, and continue honing my craft, get coached by guys like Bob Stoops. And then try my hand at the NFL? All right, let me try that out. And when that happens, there'll be a Pied Piper effect, and then the XFL becomes exceedingly more fascinating. When, not if, when that happens. So, I I don't, look, people who are asking the question, will the XFL succeed, are looking at it through the prism of, you know, can the XFL challenge the NFL? The answer is no. It'll never do that ever. The, the, the NFL's roots are, are, are far too deep, and it's not going anywhere. And the XFL will never beat the NFL. But can it be successful by its measure? Absolutely, can. And I, I think it will be. Because they've done it the right way. And they've got the cash backing to do it. 